Hello, and welcome to the After Bedtime Podcast. I am your host, HP Burrito. And on tonight's topic, what I want to talk about is contact tracing. And uh, pretty much I want to just discuss my fear in contact tracing and what it's going to lead to in the future if we actually implement it in this country as it's been implemented across the ocean. And the reason that I'm talking about this is because I read an article from CNN about the situa- this incident that happened over in Italy where a gentleman hopped on a statue and when he was trying to get off, he was uh, he accidentally broke some to- toes off this 200-year-old statue. Now, to give you the details of what's going on, they, they say they, the police in Italy have identified a 50-year-old Austrian man who broke three toes off of a statue at the museum when he posed for a photo. This, this statue is a 200-year-old plaster cast model of Antonio Cavani's statue of Paulina Bonaparte, right? And this incident happened back on July 31st at the uh, Gispatioteca Museum in Posagano, northern Italy, <laughs> or something like that. I'm sorry if my Italian is not that good. I'm not Italian. <laughs> But anyway, so this guy pretty much, I mean, the police have got him on surveillance camera. He jumped up onto this, uh, the statue, which, by the way, is a plaster cast model of another statue that's made of a marble. So this isn't even the original statue. It's just a plaster copy of a statue, number one. But the significance is that this plaster copy is 200 years old. So the statue survived for 200 years, two centuries, and this guy broke off three toes at the end of it. And it's plaster. They can fix it. Well, I understand what the big deal is. I mean, I understand that it's 200 years old and he broke it, but again, it was an accident. Yeah, he shouldn't have been up there taking a picture, but it is what it is. I'm, uh, in the article that I did read, they didn't say if they were going to charge him yet. They're still they're, we're deciding if they were going to do that. But the, the, the reason that this is affiliated to contract tracing is, is this. The way the police found this guy was because of contact tracing in Europe. When he went into the museum, he had to give him he had to write in his personal information for contact tracing purposes. So when they looked at the video recording and saw who he was, they went back to the the time when they saw when he checked in and they were able to use that information to get back to him. And when the police called him and asking about it, the wife, the person who actually took the photo, who we see in the surveillance footage, picked up the phone and started crying and admitted to it that it was her husband that had did it and broke the picture, the broke the statue. And then when he got on the phone, he was pretty much crying too, and felt real bad and was sorry about it in the first place. Now, that is right there is like that was how quick they were able to find him because of contact tracing. Now. If you're for police and you for or law enforcement, yeah, that's a good thing, and I'm not against that. But like, how isn't contact tracing just supposed to be to find out who you're contacting with? You know, for the pandemic, for the coronavirus, and now they're going to use it for policing. And, and that's and I was always worried about that from the beginning when I really first started, heard about contact tracing. So that right there was kind of you know had my uh, concerns arise from that. See, the main thing for me that I worry about here in this country is how they want to use our cell phones to track us and they record all this personal information and our data from our phones and have our, you know, our geolocation and all that stuff, you know, where they're tracking who we are and it also talks to the other phones and know who they are and then all that data gets shared and gets put up in a cloud somewhere and we don't know who has access to it if it's just the, these phone companies or if the police have access to it, or these, these contact tracers that they might want to hire to do this job to find out, you know, who you've talked to, or, or not even talked to, just who you've been around. Just because, you gotta remember, just because you walk by somebody, you know, like say in a Walmart or any other grocery store, and, you know, this gonna, their phone's going to track that. And the, the real question is, is it comes to personal information, you know, saying, and your personal data. It's, in this country, we have the right to privacy. And if our phones are sharing all this knowledge, you know, saying about our locations and who we're dealing with, you know, how much, you know, how much, what else information are they going to be getting from these phones? And that's where the real question begins. Is, is, is when is too much information 
at that point? When, when do we reach information where they've gone past the line and they've gotten too much information? And and we can't really say. Because in all honesty, you don't really know who's tracking your phone, even if you are being tracked. Although I did see a, a video on uh, the TikTok that they showed you some kind of number. It was like a star pound two one star or something to that nature. Don't try it. I guess I, I I just thinking something to that that term, you know, that way that it lets you know if your phone is being tapped. And, and I tried it, and it actually did work. And my phone is not being tapped, which actually surprised me because I figured, you know, the government had me wired, and they were freaking trying to. You know, he's drop on my phone conversations and whatnot, but I guess they're not. I guess I'm not that important, which is fine. I'd rather not be that important. But anyway, that's just pretty much it. What I want about this this episode today? It's gonna be kind of a short one. I don't. Know, I just wanted to put my two cents out there about what I thought about this. You know, whole contact tracing thing because I have my concerns, and I'm sure you guys have your concerns again, which is why we have the comment section of the video. So. Leave your comments down below. You liked the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And we'll see you guys next time after bedtime.